time to take it apart and see what's causing it and what it's going to take to fix it. But before we do that, watch this screen very closely. I'm going to let it run for a while. What clue do you see here to support the claim that it's not a fuel delivery issue? The long-term fuel trim is flatline at plus 25%. That's a lot of fuel being added. If it were that starved for fuel, it should have also been lacking power and are possibly misfiring. But since its only complaint is a check engine light, it supports the fact that it's not a fuel delivery issue. Now this is where our leak was in this area here. As you can see, the vacuum motor, when it applies air, it rotates this shaft. This is held on with a number 10 bolt. We've taken that off and now we can take this off. Now I'm also taking this screw out so I can push this out of the way just to give us a little bit more room. Now I've zoomed in on this shaft so that you can see it a little bit better. And you see it's just a little seal that goes in there. Now to show you what the problem is I'm going to take a little pair of hemostats and just grab onto this, that way my fingers won't be in the way. But you can see that that seal is no longer sealing in that hole. We can push it in and out, we can move it up and down. You can see that there's a lot of fluid in there. Well obviously air can sneak past that as the suction the vacuum from inside the intake is applying. Now that's an excessive amount of play right there. Just replacing the seal is not going to do it. And this has been going on so long now that the hole is no longer round where the seal would go. So like I said, in order to make this repair, the intake has got to come off. So we've got it all loosened. It takes about 30-40 minutes. And we're going to take the intake off and set it over here. So this is the intake we've replaced and here's the new one. When you order an intake, it comes with lots of pieces on it. As you can see, it's a complete intake. Now when we turn this over, you'll see that there's a sealed panel on this. So when we turn this one over, it has the same sealed panel. Now basically underneath this panel, if you're familiar with intake manifold runner controls, that's basically what's under here. This is actually glued down and bolted down. We've taken the bolts out and you actually have to pry up pretty hard to break the seal from the glue but it is going to be glued down. Okay, so inside here you can see that we've got intake manifold runner controls and when I move this vacuum valve you can see that it's moving them. I'm going to pry this open so that we can see what's going on. Now our problem is on this first intake manifold runner the shaft goes through the body and you can see that there's a seal there right down in there is a seal so as we open and close this it is supposed to pivot well that seal goes right through the body and it is glued in place so it's not replaceable so you can see our seal right there leaking air is letting outside unmetered air directly into the intake oh. that is way too much play now the seal on the new one you can see is glued in place now I'm not going to take it off because I don't want to disturb it. But because of that seal goes right through the body, we have to replace the old intake. And as you can see on this new intake, it is definitely sealed down and glued down. Now I wish, and I'm sure the customer did as well, that there was an easier fix for this. But because of that shaft seal, there's only one repair, and that's to replace the whole intake.
There's no way to get another seal in there and actually seal it so that it won't leak air. Since this is a direct physical air leak into the intake, explain why it only affects idle. Now a lot like electricity where power will find ground wherever it can at its closest place, vacuum is the same way. If it's looking for air, it's going to take it at its closest place. So at idle, when our throttle plate is closed, the air is coming in from that leak and it's affecting the computer. But as soon as you open the throttle plate, now you've got this huge amount of air that can come into the engine. Now our little bit of a leak over there is not so significant any longer. The computer can handle that and it wouldn't set the code above idle. Now our repair has been made. We're looking at the same PIDs on the scanner. Notice your oxygen sensor at the top. It's switching less than 100 and above 800, so it's good. And our long-term fuel trim in the middle is at 4 and the short term is at 2. So the computer is balancing the air-fuel mixture. The relationship between short-term fuel trim and long-term fuel trim is vital to fuel control. Here's another way to explain it. Now as we look at fuel trim, we know we use short-term and long-term and there's a 10% acceptable level, level of adjustment, either 10% positive or 10% negative. 10% positive is adding fuel, 10% negative is taking it away. That's acceptable. Now whenever you're looking at short term, you should always look at long term. And here's why. Now I want to use a ratcheting torque wrench to make this illustration. Let's say that I have my ratcheting torque wrench set at one foot pound, and I put it on a bolt that has a lot of threads on it and I try to torque, tighten this bolt and I turn it six times and the bolt is snug. Now if I change that from six turns to six percent adjustment, I've only got a six percent adjustment with a ten percent acceptable level. That means there would be no check engine light, that means the computer is handling it and adjusting fuel properly and everything's acceptable. But if I have to go past 10 turns and my bolt is still not tight. If this were short term, I would have exceeded the 10% level. Now long term would kick in. So it would be like if I had to take my ratchet off and change it from 1 foot pound to 2 foot pounds or let's say even say 3 foot pounds. I put it back on the bolt and I try to tighten my bolt. If it tightens down snug, that means my long term is at 3%. So at three foot-pounds, I'm able to get my bolt tight or three percent adjustment long-term. I'm not going to set a check engine light because air-fuel mixture combined short-term and long-term, long-term not exceeding ten percent, it's not going to set a check engine light. Now let's go to the other extreme. Let's say that I have my bolt on, it's still loose. I take my torque wrench off and I have to go up to 18 foot-pounds, put it back on the bolt, and I'm still not able to snug my bolt down. So I take my torque wrench off and I go to 25 foot-pounds. I put it back on the bolt, and now at 25 foot-pounds, I'm able to get my bolt tight. That means the long term had to go to 25 foot-pounds or a 25 percent adjustment. The short term then was able to keep it in air fuel balance, so I would definitely set a check engine light, and this is a bad problem. I had to go to a 25% adjustment on long term before I could get fuel under control or before I could get my bolts snugged up. So if you're only looking at short term, you could be deceived because I might be at 25% long term, but my short term may have at 25 foot-pounds may have only taken three turns to snug the bolt so my short term might only be reading three percent and if I looked at only short term I might say well three percent that's well below the ten percent acceptable level so that's good but that's where I need to look at long term as well because short term is not enough if it can't do it it goes to long term and we're looking for a combined no more than a 10% acceptable level. Short term won't set a check engine light. Long term will. If it cannot maintain the air fuel balance at an acceptable 10% plus or minus level.